Hi everybody. So in this lecture, we're going to be going over the requirements for your literary analysis essay. And in this case, we're looking at a novel called The Awakening. So this is your essay packet for our second essay. You'll see that you've got a table of contents here. So first, some memes to ease the pain of essay writing, because that's always helpful in my opinion. Then you've got your essay to prompt, followed by the rubric. Remember that an essay prompt is just a fancy way of saying the directions, so you want to make sure you pay attention to that. The rubric is just a fancy way of saying this is how I'm going to grade the essay. And then you've also got a sample student essay. Uh, keep in mind for your class that some of the essay prompts have changed. So the essay, uh, the sample student essay has not been updated yet. So this sample essay is going to seem a little bit off topic for you guys. Um, but remember that that's fine because you can still look at how the student does things like writing a thesis, using evidence, and whatnot, um, even though this student was writing about a different set of prompt options. So we'll look at that um, as we get into the lecture here. All right, so we've got a good old uh, Game of Thrones <laughs> reference here, some Toy Story goodness. Always love the T-Rex, and I mean, Napoleon Dynamite never disappoints, right? Time to get those serious analysis skills, guys. All right, so essay two prompt. For this essay, I'm looking at your ability to demonstrate, or I'm sorry, to analyze a text in detail. So you're going to be forming your own informed opinion about what this work means. Um, my biggest pet peeve with literary analysis is when students summarize. So I'm giving you a very big warning not to summarize. That's just not what we do in literary analysis. Um, so remember that at no point do you need to tell me what is happening on the surface of the text. I've read this novel a million times. I teach it often, um, and it's one of my favorites, so I promise I know every little thing that happens in the novel, and you do not need to remind me of it. And that's generally the case with literary analysis. We're analyzing, right? So we're talking about what the character's actions um, mean, but we're not necessarily saying like this happened and then this happened um, because everyone knows the facts of the story. Um, instead, we're looking deeper at the meaning behind what those things, you know, mean. And so we've got a little office reference here, right? Summary is not literary analysis. Fact. All right. So what is literary analysis? Um, in literary analysis, we're analyzing a piece of literature in some way. So you should be looking at details of the text and forming an argument about what all of those things mean when we put those together. Okay, so your job is to explain with details from the text as evidence how you interpret the text in a meaningful way. And you've got some options um, for how to do that, right? So that brings us to these possible prompts here. So remember that um, literary analysis does leave a good deal of room for interpretation, but whatever you think is going on in the text does need to be supported with evidence from a scholarly outside source and from evidence uh, within the text itself, okay? So keep that in mind when the time comes to write this essay. So the first option that you have is to analyze the ways in which Edna's individual awakening is consistently challenged by social expectations throughout the novel. So if you're going to look at this option, you're going to be looking at our main character, and her name is Edna, and you'll be looking at how throughout the novel she is working on uh, herself, right? So she is kind of coming to terms with herself and going through some struggles with what kind of a person she wants to be versus um, what society has expected of her up to this point. Um, 
So without giving too much away, depending on when you're watching this lecture, um, we see Edna kind of struggle with, okay, I want to do these things and I feel this way, but she's living in a society with very rigid social expectations. So she's been raised um, to do and believe certain things and to act and behave in very specific ways. Um, and she starts to challenge those a little bit. So if you're looking at this option and you want to write about this option, then you're going to use evidence from the text and a reputable outside source um, to demonstrate and discuss how Edna's individual kind of desires and what she wants to do and what she wants to be as a person um, keep getting challenged by those social expectations that she's sort of had, um, you know, ingrained into her brain um, just her whole life. So that's one option. Option number two has to do with a few other um, kind of supporting characters here. Um, so if you're looking at this one, you're going to be looking at Edna, her friend Adele, and another friend of her named Mademoiselle Reese. And you're going to look at how each of those characters can be seen as symbolic of the only three social options women during this time period could fulfill. And then you're also going to be explaining why these three options can be seen as problematic. So as we get further into our literary analysis unit, we'll talk a lot about sort of what roles were open to women at the time, because keep in mind this novel was written a long time ago, and it takes place in the 1800s. So things were a little bit different then in terms of, you know, what options women had, and men as well. Um, things were just a lot more rigid than they are, you know, in our time. So if you're looking at this one, you're going to kind of explore those things, right? So how are each of these women symbolic of those social options that women had? And how can this be seen as problematic? So maybe it would cause problems for them. Uh, it would make them, you know, feel they had to live up to certain expectations and they couldn't sort of exist outside of the, the small box that that expectation, you know, had for them. Um, if you are looking at this option, you're, of course, still going to be using evidence from both the novel and a reputable outside source to help you kind of explore that. Option number three. If you look at this option, you're going to analyze the ways in which the men in the novel symbolize the roles that men could play in the Victorian times in America. So uh, two and three have some similarities, right? And number two, you'll be looking at how the women in the novel represent these options that people had at the time. But if you're looking at option number three, we're looking at the men in the novel. So um, there are several men to choose from, including uh, we've got Robert, uh, Leonce, and a couple of other kind of side characters, um, but generally Robert Leonce are, are good ones that people go to for this. So you'll be looking at the men in the novel and looking at how they symbolize sort of the only options that men had in terms of what kind of people they could be. Um, and you can discuss the advantages and the disadvantages. Um, so we want to look at, you know, what roles men could play, what advantages did they have, but also how could these roles be problematic for them in some of the same ways that, you know, very uh, narrow roles might have been problematic for women. So this is option number three. And remember that whichever option you choose, you're only required to discuss that option. So I'm going over all of them, and of course they're all a little bit related, but for your essay, you should just choose one of these options and only talk about that thing. Um, again, for whatever option you choose, including option number three, you would still need to use evidence from the text, that's the novel, and also a reputable outside source to support your claims in your thesis. Then we've got one more option here. Um, and this has to do with naturalism, which again we'll talk about in our literary analysis unit. So if you want to look at this one, 
Um, you're going to analyze and explain how naturalism is present in the awakening. Specifically, I would like you to look at how Edna is affected by her environment and how things beyond her control limit her individuality and therefore her choices in life. So that's your last option. Of course, for option number four, as well as whichever option you choose, you would still need to use evidence from the novel and a reputable outside source to support that thesis and those claims. All right, so that brings us to the basic requirements of the essay. First of all, due dates are listed in the schedule of classes. If you are not sure how to get there, you can go to our syllabus, which is in the welcome module, and then scroll all the way down to the bottom and you will see a schedule of classes. That schedule has dates for the entire semester, and so you can look ahead and see when your draft is due, when your essay plans are due, when your tutoring reflections are due, all that good stuff, um, and keep keep those things in mind. Maybe write them down in your planner, make yourself some, uh, some reminders in your phone or however you keep track of the goings on in your life. All right, so um, basic requirements. Due dates are in the schedule of classes. Page length is six to eight pages. Remember that that's typed and double spaced with one inch margins in MLA format. As with any essay, uh, your works cited page is not included in this page length requirement, so keep that in mind. You do need six full pages of your writing. You also need to argue for your interpretation of the text based on the prompt that you chose using details from the work to make a meaningful point. So again, um, remember those four options that we just went over. Remember you're only choosing one. You also need an outside scholarly source um, for this essay. So you need to use the library databases to help you find a source. We will be reading some outside sources um, along with our readings from the novel, and you're able to use those scholarly sources here if they work with your essay and the prompt that you chose. Otherwise, uh, you can use those library databases um, to find a good outside source to help you. Make sure that you're citing your textual examples in MLA format. So regardless of if you are paraphrasing or quoting directly, always, always cite to avoid plagiarism. You will be turning in some pre-writing uh, things, such as an outline um, or some essay plans, maybe a timeline, things like that. This varies depending on which class you're in. So make sure that you're looking at the schedule of classes and our weekly schedules, and that'll tell you exactly what kind of pre-writing is required for your specific class. For this essay, your draft is a full-length rough draft. That means that your rough draft needs to be six full pages, not, not counting your works cited page. And then, of course, make sure you participate in those workshops to um, continue revising your writing. All right, so that brings us to the essay rubric. This is how I grade the final draft of your essay. Um, so if you're not too familiar with rubrics, remember that you've got categories over here that tell you how many points are available. And then when I'm grading the essay, I will grade each category, add up those different totals, and then that's how you get the grade that you earn on your final draft. Remember, the uh, rough draft is an A for effort. So you turn in that rough draft. It is the length that I have asked for. You get full credit for that rough draft. But then the final draft, that's when you need to make sure that you're hitting all of these marks in this rubric. So the first one, does your paper meet the basic requirements, meaning it is in MLA format, you have the right page length, and you have a strong thesis that addresses the prompt? That's worth 15 points. The next category deals with fully addressing each part of your prompt and using fully developed cohesive body paragraphs, and this is 35 points. So for this, you need to be using that quote sandwich method that we've talked about since the beginning of the semester. 
Um, and you also need to make sure that your paragraphs are not only on topic, but that they also relate to one another in meaningful ways to help build your argument as we go. So we'll be working on all of these things throughout our literary analysis unit. Um, the next part of the uh, rubric here has to do with citations. So make sure that you are citing the, out, the uh, story itself, right? So you're uh, pulling quotes and or paraphrases from the novel, but you're also pulling quotes from your outside source. And um, again, depending on which class you're in, an outside source is required. And you should be citing those things multiple times to support your claims and your thesis. And that's worth 35 points. The last section here is just for sort of originality. So um, I'm looking for you to provide a meaningful and original interpretation of the text, and also that your essay is pretty free from grammatical errors, and that's 15 points. Okay, so that is your SA2 rubric for the final draft, and all of that adds up to 100 points. So the final draft is out of 100. So here is your sample student essay. Um, and for this essay prompt, it might be different than your classes. Um, so the prompt that this student was answering was this one here. So this student was looking at how gender roles and medical views having to do with women in the 1800s contributed to Edna's options in life and therefore her unhappiness. So this is the prompt that this sample essay is answering. Again, it might look a little bit different depending on which class you're in and which prompts you have. Um, so I updated my prompts recently. Um, so uh, if you haven't seen, you know, um, a new and updated essay, that's why. But you can still pull a lot of important things from this sample essay. So you can see how it's formatted. You can see that the student has a clear thesis that answers this prompt. And you can also see that the student is doing great things with paragraphs, such as having a clear claim, um, looking at some evidence from the text, citing an MLA, and then following up that um, evidence with their own interpretation, right? Um, also, in this sample essay, I have highlighted some things for you. So you'll notice that this is highlighted in red, and then as we scroll through, we've got some more red highlighting, then some orange, yellow, and so on, right? So it's color-coded here for you. And if you scroll down to the end, if I can get there, you'll see that these um, colors correlate with the prompt. Or I'm sorry, not the prompt, the rubric. So remember that this is the prompt that the student was responding to, and then this is the rubric. So what I did here is I highlighted things in different colors so that as you're looking back at it, you can look and see, okay, so the stuff in red shows me how and why this student met these basic requirements. And then the things in orange show me how and why the student got this grade, which is 32 out of 35, um, for addressing each aspect of the prompt and using those fully developed and cohesive body paragraphs. Anything in yellow has to do with citations, and then the stuff in green has to do with a meaningful and original interpretation and grammar issues. So you can see um, this is a real student essay, so of course it's not perfect. But it's a really strong representation. Um, we've got an 89 here, which is an outstanding grade um, on this essay. Um, just one point shy of the A, um, but right there. So this is a good example to look at if you just want to see, you know, what a successful um, literary analysis essay looks like. And you can see the Works Cited page here um, just for, you know, comparison so you can look and see, hmm, is mine in the same sort of format, right? Um, same thing with the double spacing and the font and the size and all that good stuff. 
All right. So that is our sample student essay and our student packet um, with literary analysis. It will all start making more sense as we continue on in our literary analysis um, unit, but I like to give you guys these sample packets um, early so you know what we're working towards, right? As always, any questions, talk to your groups, talk to a tutor, talk to me, and I look forward to seeing what everyone has to say about